Hello, hello. I am at Castle Coombe Racetrack. Um, used to be a military airfield back in World War II where they used to train Polish uh, pilots. And they built a racetrack here in the 50s and um, they do duathlons and time trials and motorbike races and car races and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I've come down to film uh, Harry Palmer try and beat his um, PB for 10 miles on the track, which is just there. Um, so he's going off in about 25 minutes. I've got to park up and not crash. Crashing on a perimeter road of a racetrack would not be the most uh, sensible thing to achieve. Um, so I've got to park up and then haul ass down to the start line so I can see Harry start. And I'm going to try and get all the way around the track, try and film him. He's got a dead gorgeous uh, MV disc wheel he's using tonight. And he's doing everything or has done everything he possibly can to try and um, break 20 minutes for 10 miles. That's the plan. So um, yeah, that's what I'm here for. Let's see how he gets on, because it's a perfect night at Castle Coombe. Uh, beautiful sunshine, not much wind, it's nearly always windy here, but not much wind. And uh, yeah, let's see how he gets on. I've missed my spot. The John Lennon of time trialing. <laughs> you right? Yeah, man, not too bad. I'm nervous, but I'm all right. What are you nervous about? It's like 50 shades of blue as well, look at this. <laughs> God. I'm a fashion guru. <laughs> Look at that. That is a thing of beauty. Dirty. It is dirty. Well, clean, but dirty. So what is that then? That's, is that one of their new ones? That's, uh, came out in 2018, I think. But I looked on YouTube, there's like no videos on it at all, which is really weird. Well, that'll change. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and went out on it yesterday and it's, it's definitely noticeable. They say, it only really gets a benefit over 27 miles an hour, <laughs> <laughs> which is oh, right. quite quick. But I even felt like we well, just feel quick with the disc on, don't you? Sounds amazing you as, well. as well. Oh, that just—that's beautiful. What's the plan for the warm-up on the road then? So initially, it's just going to be like 20 minutes easy riding. Normally I feel pretty rubbish for the first 10 minutes, just getting the legs warmed up. The first thing you've done today, you've done anything else? Yeah, I've done, done a bit of activation, right. that's about it. Had a good lie this morning, eating quite a lot of food, <laughs> so it's been, it's been decent. Uh, so yeah, I'll do about 20 minutes, and then a couple of kind of, um, you know, two minute efforts at like race power. Obviously that's quite hard to, to determine what the race power is going to be, but around like 350 watts is my like normalized power, 360 watts is what I'm aiming for, like normalized power. Mm -hmm. So do a couple of minutes of that kind of intensity, riding in position, just getting the body firing really, um, and then another bit chilled, uh, chilled spin. And then what we're going to do is come back, you're allowed one lap warm up, and that's going to be crucial to, to figure out the wind direction because it, it feels quite windy this evening.
be fair, that was the sound of a man riding a 2001, I reckon. God, I really hope he did it. It didn't sound good though. He sounded pretty on edge as he came across the line. Everyone else dead silent. Mind you, that said, I don't know who's worked harder today. I've just walked around the whole thing. It's so humid. Anyway, it's not about me. It's about Harry. Let's get back and see how he got on. And? Yeah, I got it. Oh. I got it. What was the actual time? 19.44. I told you when you went under, yeah. it would be more than 10 seconds under, yeah, didn't I? Was, I? Mate. mate, that is a banger. 19.44. Yeah, so not even, not even just under. 30.4 miles an hour. Mate. That hurt. <laughs> but I feel like I paced it. Pretty that was on. awesome. Yeah, it was good. Power PB, position felt good. It looked amazing all the way around. The only thing I had was I was stuck behind someone at a chicane, but it probably lost like two seconds. It did look quite, it looked quite busy out there. Yeah. It was in places, other places you had the roads yourself. Yeah. The last couple of laps is really clear. Really focused on like the racing line, so that helped. Mate, I'm so chuffed with that. And in my opinion, I think Harry has every right to be chuffed by that. It was a hell of a ride, and it was one that took quite a lot of effort to try and get right over the last couple of weeks. It isn't the first attempt he's made at that. And I just wanted to talk briefly about some of the things that I learned from watching him over the last couple of weeks uh, that I think we can take a little bit of inspiration from and that we can maybe try and put into some of our own riding. The first thing is that it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're an elite triathlete, whether you're a professional road cyclist, a club racer, or you're new to the sport, we all need to train. That's one of the hardest things to kind of get our heads around, but no matter how much money we're going to spend on a new set of wheels or putting money into getting an aero position, we have to get the engine right. The engine uh, is the most important thing after all. Um, there's no point in having a Ferrari chassis with uh, some kind of Robin Reliant engine in it. It's not going to work very well. Uh, there's a famous saying in cycling that it doesn't get any easier, you just get faster. That's the only difference. It hurts everybody as much as it hurts each other. It's just the faster you go, it, it hurts for a slightly less amount of time. Obviously, Harry only uh, suffered for 19 minutes and 44 seconds, and there were people out there suffering for 26 minutes. Um, but the suffering is still the same. We need to train no matter who we are. The second thing is perseverance. As I said earlier, it's not the first time Harry had made an attempt on this TT. Uh, he's been trying over a few uh, t attempts this summer uh, to try and get under 20 minutes, and he's had some setbacks, and he's tried lots of different things. Ultimately, perseverance is a key trait. Now, obviously, Harry is a pro triathlete, um, but having that motivation to be able to continue persevering and being able to work out what the problems are, what didn't go well, what went well, and evaluate that and try and make those changes uh, is, is definitely a, an aspect that we could all take a little bit of inspiration from. Thirdly, goal setting. Obviously, Harry wanted to get out and ride under sub 20, but that was just the target goal. He knew all the composite performance goals that would go into that, what power he was gonna need, what average speed, all the different areas of pacing, his position, all those little uh, performance aspects that can be quantified, that when you add all those things together should result in a target goal being achieved. Um, obviously, those things need juggling around a little bit, but having that goal and being able to break it down uh, into its composite performance and measurable kind of goals is an absolutely key aspect of being able to get to that point of reaching your targets. Harry mentioned in the video that he thought he got his pacing bang on. I spoke to a pro uh, cyclist who rides for GB called Will Berg about a couple of years ago about pacing, and he was saying that most people get it the wrong way around. Um, when the wind's behind you or you're descending, they tend to ride as hard as they can, and then when they're riding into the wind or uphill, uh, they tend to ease off a little bit. Um, science and the mathematics shows that if you work harder on the hard sections and relax uh, and recover a little bit on the easier sections, that will result in a faster overall time. So five, 10 percent over your kind of target pacing uh, when you're heading into the wind or going uphill and five to ten percent uh, in recovery on the descents or with the wind should give you a faster time overall. Harry also mentioned racing lines. This isn't something I know a huge amount about, but one of the things that was really noticeable on the hours of footage that I filmed that I wasn't able to put into the video at Castle Coombe uh, was just that the faster riders took better lines around corners. Uh, they just seemed to be much smoother in the way they went round corners. They took more kind of softer lines um, and looking into the apexes of uh, the corners and things like that. And that's something that I'd like to speak to uh, some experts about in a future video. And finally, position. It's something we all know about, um, but having a, a good position on the bike, an aerodynamic position on the bike doesn't necessarily mean you're able to hold that or put the power out. So it's always a compromise of getting into a good aero position that takes up uh, as little space in the wind as possible because 80% of your effort goes into uh, trying to defeat the wind 
um, trying to actually get it to the point where you can hold that position, which I know Harry finds really difficult uh, because he's got a superb position, uh, but his head comes up at times and he was really aware of that on Wednesday night and actually managed to hold it really well, but he's also able to put power out in that position as well. So it's been a good week for time trialing uh, overall, Harry getting his sub 20, but also the magnificent uh, time trial on stage 20 of the Tour de France that happened less than 24 hours ago, it was yesterday. Uh, I was absolutely glued to the box watching uh, the time count from Roglic um, and Pogaccia and uh, just watching that incredible um, race really. And what we can take from that is something I think we're gonna be picking the bones over for years and years, even if we only look at uh, a comparison between Tom Dumoulin and Walt Van Aert and the bike changes and uh, Dumoulin being able to climb as well as he did on a TT rig versus people that did the bike changes. Uh, what an amazing uh, race that was. And one of my hopes for uh, the future really is that people suddenly fall in love with time trials again. I think they've kind of fallen out of favor over the last kind of few years and I find them terribly exciting um, in Grand, grand Tours. Um, I'm looking forward to the Grand Tours that are coming up uh, next that have got uh, two or three uh, time trials coming up, team time trials and individual time trials. I just find them really, really exciting and I hope they find a bit of favour again. Anyway, I just want to wrap up by saying a big thank you to uh, Saddleback for lending uh, such a magnificent wheel um, to Harry to help him get his PB with that MV wheel. Uh, James and the team at DB Max who were really, really helpful uh, looking at all the restrictions and how I could get into the centre field and making sure that we were socially distancing but I was able to get uh, onto the track centre to be able to film all of that stuff. And finally, for Harry for inviting me and uh, absolutely smashing it, making it worth my while by getting that sub 20. I hope that that added a little bit of pressure. Um, I like to think it added a little bit of pressure that maybe uh, contributed to him uh, being able to smash his PB, which he absolutely has done uh, by a country mile. 16 seconds under, under his 20 minute uh, target. Well done, Harry. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Have a good week.